Right, so I can I can start now. So just let me know whenever I can start with the presentation so that I can go on. You you can start now. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Mohini, and uh, my apologies for the delay in starting the presentation. We had some glitches with the uh, telephone lines uh, uh, because of which we've got delayed. But we'll just get started for the presentation. So I'm Kiran Darbar running the presentation. Uh, so we, the quick agenda slide. So we will uh, start the presentation uh, discussing what the messaging is and the different programming models we have on the messaging and then uh, how I, WebSphere MQ has evolved on this space and now how we can visualize uh, WebSphere MQ and Message Broker as the universal messaging infrastructures. Uh, and the .NET platform or MQ's existence on the .NET platform is, is primarily focused from the client's perspective. So we will look in, we'll first, um, you know, uh, go through the MQ.NET stack. So we've called it as .NET stack as we have layer of products available or the layer of clients available on the .NET platform from MQ. Uh, at, so at that point of time, uh, once after the MQ.NET stack, I'll hand over the presentation to Mr. Malan Gora, who will cover it from the uh, message brokers .NET compute node and its integration capabilities side. So this is the quick agenda slide for today's presentation or the session. So moving on to the uh, next slide. I'm on slide number three now. Uh, I hope uh, my presentation is getting reflected uh, across. Um, so what is messaging? So messaging is a method of communication between software applications. Each application, uh, uh, henceforth called as a messaging client, connects to the messaging queue that provides facilities for sending, receiving of messages. From the picture that's there on the chat, messaging client A connects to messaging queue and sends messages. And the messaging client B connects to the messaging queue and receives those messages. Now this is how the messaging infrastructure helps to establish a communication channel via the messaging queues between these two applications. Now this communication can be synchronous or asynchronous. Now we call it as a synchronous when both applications are alive and sending and receiving messages. And it is asynchronous when A sends messages when B is not currently running or available, but then when B comes up, it can get all those messages or receive all those messages and the data. So that's where we, we call it as asynchronous. Uh, this is quick introduction about, uh, or, you know, know, what's messaging. I'm moving on to the next slide, which is slide number four. Right, so we have two programming models in messaging. One is point to point, which is a typical, typical example for application to application communication via messaging queue. There is a one-to-one -one relation between these applications where uh, sending and receiving application uh, or, uh, uh, ensures that the message is delivered to a single consumer. Uh, so from the picture, application A sends a message to the messaging queue and then B consumes it. And in return, B sends a response back, which A gets it. So this is how typically a point-to-point uh, application messaging works and hence we call it as a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, messaging model. The next block is publish subscribe programming model which is a mechanism by which subscribers can receive information in the form of messages from the publishers. Now the publisher from the picture is the owner which publishes message or relevant information in the form of messages onto a given topic. All the n number of subscribers which have subscribed to the topic can get that information. Now, uh, the topic can be you know uh, anything. It could be a sports topic, and the publisher publishes messages message onto the uh, sports topic, which all the n number of subscribers who have subscribed to it will get it. Now, this is a one-to-many mapping as we can see on the picture. Now, there's a slight difference between a point-to-point -point and a publish subscribe model where in point to point, the message is delivered only to a single consumer or the consumer that is currently connected and gets the message. In case of publish subscribe, the messages are delivered to all the n subscribers who have subscribed for a given topic. So these are the two programming models that we have in messaging. So moving on to the next slide, uh, I'm on slide number five. So you know we have seen what is messaging and how applications can communicate in a typical messaging scenario. And then 
the programming models available for messaging. Now the third is on the beginning slide we have discussed that the applications can connect to connect to a messaging queue which provides this messaging facilities. In case of MQ, the, the MQ server is the message provider which provides this facility to send and receive messages. And the MQ clients are the applications which connect to queue manager or the MQ server for sending and receiving messages. So we have two models. One is a server model where uh, client and server or the queue manager, the MQ queue manager exists on the same computer. And communication happens via inter-process communication. So which is faster, performance oriented. And, the, and we call this as local or bindings mode of connection. And the another model is a client model where MQQ manager is on an elsewhere computer and client is on an elsewhere computer. And the client establishes a connection channel between with the queue manager for sending and receiving this data. Now this is called as a client model. So just to come, summarize quickly from the MQ's perspective, so we have seen what is messaging and then uh, what are the different programming models available from messaging and then what is an MQ client is or an MQ messaging client is. So I'm moving on to the next slide. I'm on slide number six now. So how did MQ evolve over the years? So, so we started with MQ version 1.1 which is with the assured delivery or point to point where a consumer will get the message and then moving on to the multi-platforms and you know we've continuously expanded and evolved uh, or grown with the features and expanded with the uh, with the products such as MQ every place, MQ Express, low latency messaging um, where uh, it is uh, uh, the throughput is most important and then file transfer addition which is for transferring files using MQ and then MQ telemetric transport which is for pervasive messaging or mobile space uh, and then uh, the latest MQ version 7.5 is the latest available which is named as MQ Advanced uh, which provides MQ Advanced Message Security which is a security model and then MQ File Transfer Edition which is basically for transferring of the files under one roof along with the MQ messaging. So which is what is named as MQ Advanced uh, at the current offering latest available in markets. So moving on to the uh, next slide. So, so we've seen, uh, um, you know, mentioning as universal messaging approach. Now this is the slide which shows how MQ becomes a universal messaging backbone. So it has best delivery mechanism with choice of services where offer, it offers whole range of, of services on a single network from transactional to the low latency. A resilient integrity and, it has got resilient integrity and secure features with, uh, you know, messaging, message queue for high resilience and message storing for high speeds and choice of persistent strategies with a granular security for data and transport. It's highly available, uh, provides strategies with software only for highly high availability and as well as uh, hardware uh, based and for ZOS which is mainframe systems we have shared queues which makes it highly available. And then it's anything to anywhere where you know you have choice of skills, choice of transports, platforms and environments uh, with MQ to work on. So this is what makes MQ as a universal messaging backbone and then it's highly scalable. And this is, and, and hence this are some of the targeted points that most of the business solutions look for and MQ has, WebSphere MQ has all within which makes it you know as a universal messaging backbone. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, so this is a quick slide on the Microsoft.NET framework which just gives you know quick overview and just introduces onto the .NET framework. So it's a software framework developed by Microsoft that runs on uh, uh, Windows operating system, uh, provides class library and uh, programming languages interoperability. Now the applications that are developed on uh, .NET are called as assemblies and uh, execute and they execute on common language runtime. And the common language runtime provides services such as security, memory management, and exception handling. The class library and common language runtime together, you know, call as document framework. Uh, two types of applications, application modes available on document framework. One is managed, where the complete memory management, exception handling, security are handled by CLR, and application runs entirely under, under the control and scope of CLR. 
The other type is unmanaged, where the parts of application can execute outside CLR scope. For example, calling a C API, I do a platform invocation and call a C API. So this is, uh, and from MQ we support, we have uh, support for both managed and unmanaged modes. Wherein managed, the, uh, the complete messaging client uh, or the MQ interfaces are implemented in C sharp language. And in, in case of unmanaged, we have .NET classes uh, delegating uh, the calls to C clients or CMQI, MQ interfaces. So that's how the managed and unmanaged supports exist, uh, you know, exist as of today. So this is a quick information on .NET framework, but for but in case you want to, you know, uh, get more information, you can, uh, you know, reach out to the Microsoft website. Uh, they have lots of information there. So moving on to the uh, next slide, I'm on slide number nine now. So this picture gives a complete MQ client portfolio. So uh, at one corner, towards the uh, top left corner, we have MQI, which are the native MQ interfaces, uh, currently available with C, COBOL, etc. And then we have uh, the you know uh, C plus plus .NET and Java languages existing as OO classes for MQI. So we have uh, object-oriented classes on top of this MQI, uh, but written in uh, uh, for. Uh, in for .NET, they are written in C sharp language, and then the other programming model is uh, JMS MQJMS, which is based on JMS specifications. And exactly uh, for the non-Java world, we have another programming model, which is XMS, uh, which is implemented based on JMS specification, but provides messaging API in C, C++, and C sharp uh, on .NET platform. So uh, this gives a quick picture on the MQ client portfolio. Uh, uh, more on uh, the .NET classes and the XMS we will be seeing in the slides to come. But uh, these are the different programming models we have uh, um, as messaging clients available from MQ. So moving on to the uh, next slide. I'm on slide number 10 now. Uh, 